Hello, my name's Jason and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. But this time we're using dum 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 watercolor and gouache. Watercolor and gouache. Now I've made a video that tells you about the equipment that I use, so in this one I'll just go for it and see what happens. <laughs> so what we're going to look at is this painting here. This painting I did on location. When I say on location, I mean outside in a field. <laughs> I was there, sat on the floor, near some horses, in the field, and I was looking across, and I was like, oh, that's a nice view. I'll have a go at painting that. And uh, I think I captured it. Um, the only problem I see, I don't know if you see this as well with this picture, is this tree. This tree is actually a bit further away than this tree. But when you look, even though, you know, I painted it along um, almost on at the horizon line, it's not really light enough to make it look further away. And um, <laughs> my biggest problem was... It was a dry day, on a dry, sunny day, with no mist in the air. <laughs> so everything looked the same. If it was uh, 500 meters away, it looked dark. If it was really far away, like these trees here, they were dark as well. I actually faked that lightness in the background to make that look further away. It's totally fake. And this tree, I tried to desaturate the yellow a bit on the highlights, but to be honest, it was so hot I just wanted to get done and move and move on to the next one, which was uh, another one But Anyway, this is the painting I'm going to use and uh, I'll tr try and remember to put a little image of it somewhere um, And this is where I realize I have actually no room <laughs> To put this <laughs> Um, 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 I'll put it there. I'll move this. Maybe, maybe this will work like this. Kind of should have worked that out before, but never mind. Basic ideas there. Um, I'll use it for reference. For this picture to show you how to use well <laughs> how to paint I don't know what I'm saying anymore how to create this picture that's what I'm trying to say so when I first started I was like right um, I don't want to put the sky in first because I want my darks to stay nice and dark and so I did this I uh, I got the I had it some gouache blue and brown because that's my black um recently i did a portrait and i used quite a bit of black to dull my colors but it made my colors look awful and uh it seems to affect watercolors more so i've decided to <laughs> i don't know why i had the black on actually because i've been using it like this mostly and then i thought i'll put black on but uh, the blue and brown works great because you, you can use a bit of blue Bit of brown and then you've got a dark color And you can if you want your dark to be more earthly and More to the brown spectrum then use that if you wanted it to be more blue cold then you put more blue in so I made myself like a dirty color like that and then I went into my sap green sap green watercolor this is <laughs> so this is a bit mixed media really I went into my uh, sap green watercolor and I threw that in because it, the dark was greeny bluey brown that's what what it was in my eyes anyway that's what I saw, so that's what I went for. A greeny, browny 
hint of blue <laughs> color. There we go. So I made made a bit of a triangle really, throwing in the blue in, throwing in the brown, and then bringing the green in from up here. If you're wondering about the paints, I'll try and tell you what colours I'm using because I've got all these laid out, but I don't tend to use many. <laughs> I don't don't use many colours really. Um, so I'll try and remember to say uh, sap green anyway, with a little bit of burnt umber gouache and ultramarine blue gouache. So I'm just going to move my palette there just so I can see the picture, <laughs> and uh, let's have a go at this. So first things first, I want the. Um, I'll paint it. I'll paint here because then I can see there. <laughs> so uh, we've got this tree. So we've got to think the, uh, the the whole shape of the tree. So the bottom part, sort of like that. I'll get a bit more, a bit more water because I, what I tend to do is I do a really thin wash type first. And then uh, after I've done that, then I can go darker because when this dries, as you'll find out, it dries a little bit lighter. Uh, da, 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 da. That's the shape I can bring out a little bit, I think, about there. Let's make that like that. This isn't going to be an exact copy because. I uh, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to copy it again. I've already painted it. So now I'm just going to paint it, but different. And I'm going to make it different because this is the second time I've done it, and I get a bonus now because I can make it better. All those little problems that I had. <laughs> When I was painting the original, I can remember them, so I can paint them again. So I tend to only use two brushes, um, really. I tend to use this brush, or my other flat brush. And then uh, I go, uh, by the way, I'm going into more brown when I put these uh, branches in. Tree, trunk, branches, things. <laughs> and uh, yeah I go into more brown when I put those but they are greeny brown they're not brown brown I think that was one of my mistakes when uh, when I first started painting trees <laughs> I mean I say one of my mistakes I, I, I always am making errors in my art but that's the only way to get better isn't it if you don't make mistakes and then think well how am I going to sort that out <laughs> that's a right mess what am I going to do with this if you don't do them then well you're not learning are you so you're just mindlessly painting <laughs> or you're just a master painter and uh, just do everything awesome that'd be good wouldn't it not sure if that ever happens. If you know a master painter <laughs> or someone who's been painting a long time, I'd like to ask that question actually. Maybe I could interview some uh, artists that have been uh, painting for a long time and I'll ask them that question. <laughs> Do you ever make painting mistakes? Are you still learning to paint? Or are you been painting for so many years that you've got so good at it that no longer are you trying? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know the answer to that already, but you know, be interesting to ask questions like that, wouldn't it? So I'm getting a bit of sap green and uh, throwing more in. And now I'll watch this dry. I'm, I'm st apologies it's a bit shiny when it's wet it, it's just the nature of the beast it's a shiny one um but as it dries it'll not be 
shiny. <laughs> now if I remember rightly, um, these trees, I, I think I changed them. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why. I think I made them, oh, I think I made them less. I, I remember. There was quite a lot of um, dark bluey. So this is too a bit more blue in it. Um, bluey color because it was a uh, like an evergreen tree and it had more blue to the look of the uh, that tree yeah and I didn't want all of the uh, colors that it had <laughs> not all the colors all, all the um, what do you call that it's not foliage is it I don't know all the mass of it I didn't want it so I just took a little bit and made it, it looks a bit palm tree-ish in the uh, reference picture though um, the painting that I've done which is a bit weird I can't really remember now I think they were like that just a little bit more so that'll be alright so here we go let's just throw in some of this now this paper it does um, you know, it does cockle a bit in this card I'm using a uh, some I can't remember the brand of this now <laughs> but it's in, in one of my other videos I'll link it in the list of this video of my stuff that I'm using which should help hopefully sorry I was just mixing some more of this dark colour and I'll just throw that on a bit of water in there I think I'll put a bit more green in it. I don't need this to be all the same. This is just our uh, dark part. Okay, that'll do. And now, what I was saying, this tree, let's move this back a sec so I can uh, talk about it. This tree was, you know, it was a long way off. It was um, a good hundred or so meters further away maybe more actually come to think of it and uh, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some blue in my color blue and green a bit more blue and I'm gonna fake some atmosphere in this painting because I want some atmosphere um, because then it's going to look further away. So the first thing is, I don't want it to be as... dark. So the darks are going to be lighter. I'll try and uh, copy the shape, sort of. Maybe we can make it more obvious that it's further away. Maybe it's there. That looks even further away now. Yeah. Not sure about that shape there. I'll get rid of that. The power of this brush. <laughs> Can make changes so powerfully. A bit more of this sap green and a bit more of the blue. Now I'm thinking about that back background. Um, I added it after I had the sky. So we need to add the sky now. So let's wash the brush. Wash in the brush in my magic brush washer. <laughs> it's quick memory. No. Okay, I'll move this back there. Maybe I'll move my brush washer. That's better. Now I can see both. Hmm, you might be able to see both. Almost. I'll try and put a little picture. Anyway, <laughs> let's carry on painting. So, um, 
we need to put the sky in now. The reason I'm doing it this order, the reason is, it's really simple in fact, but the reason is, <laughs> move this around so you can see, I'm just mix, I'm mixing some, getting some of this white gouache, my brush is a little bit wet still, and some of the ultramarine blue white gouache and ultramarine blue I might get a little bit of the uh, cerulean as well ah, the ultramarine blue is alright give me more of the white so the reason is if you put this white gouache down on the on the page and then you you want to say put your dark in well you're gonna have to use um more gouache to add on um to make it dark uh, because <laughs> this this color oh, that's quite bright in it there's more blue in it than that oh, that might be better it will dull down a little bit as it dries but So this, this colour, what was I saying? <laughs> oh yeah, the order. So the reason I did it in this order is because the white gouache um, mixed with my little bit of blue, if you want to put dark on, you're going to have to use more gouache to put the dark on because it will reactivate with water so if you put in on this your dark color with just water color it's going to reactivate with this and then oh dear it's going to go all messy and muddy and problematic because white paint <laughs> this uh white gouache is terrible for shadow colors it is terrible. In fact, white in general is terrible for shadows because it muds it up. Muds it up. It does. You gotta believe me, it does. It muds it all up. It does. And it's annoying. And it's happened to me a few times. <laughs> because you're, you're painting away and then you think, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. I, uh, I meant to um I meant to put my darks in and I've already put a sky down and now oh no what am I going to do so you uh you get your other gouache out you get your pencil case of other gouache and you mix your dark and you use your gouache like oil paints and that will get you out of trouble <laughs> that's the only way I've um found helps me anyway because gouache is so um great as a medium it really is and uh i didn't realize how good it was actually <laughs> i've used it a few times but since i've been using it a lot and you get used to the medium you start realizing how good it is and that's why uh professionals have used it <laughs> I mean, the clues are there, aren't they? I'm just getting a bit of uh, water. I'm gonna get this a little bit, um, a bit better, a bit less messy. There we go. That's a bit better. getting in all those these areas now all 
these little bits that need uh, need the sky in there. I'm gonna. Oh, actually, we was gonna have it to there, weren't we? So I'll just go a bit with my finger. Won't matter too much because I'm gonna put grass there, so I'll just mix that away. Just fill these bits in. So these little light areas, when you notice trees, when you're out there painting them and hiding in the woods, <laughs> jumping out on people, and they're like, ah, what the hell was you doing in the bushes? Uh, I was painting, sir. Oh yes, likely story. <laughs> you was hiding in there, wasn't you? No, no, I was really painting. <laughs> and then they call the police and then uh, the police say what was you doing in the bushes behind that man's house and you say well I was painting and uh, and he says well prove it and you show him your sketchbook and uh, he looks at you funny and then sends you on your way <laughs> It's funny when when you're out and about painting, you get some funny looks. Funny looks from other other folk. I'm sure uh, some of them think to themselves, oh, "I wish I could do that. Wish I could be out painting. Look at his picture. Oh wow, that must be worth millions and millions." This is this is the best artist I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's never happened. Um, what well, what did happen once when I was out painting, and I was in Scarborough, which is in uh, Yorkshire and uh, the coast, and I was there painting away. <laughs> um washing my brush and this this chap chap came over and uh, and he said oh is it all right if I have a look at your uh, picture and I said uh, um, yeah sure and they looked at it just using a paper towel to dry my brush um, still a little bit wet and uh, and then it's and then he Now I've wet my brush a little bit, <laughs> and then uh, he said, uh, "Oh, well, that, uh, how long have you been painting?" Uh, and uh, and I says, "Not, not, um, not very long. Not, not with these. Just getting used to the medium." Because I had to say that because he looked at my picture and thought it looked awful. I could tell by the way he looked, and uh, the reason is when you first do it, it does look awful, doesn't it? Looks a right mess when you first start in a picture. <laughs> so I thought I'd get my excuse in straight away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm, 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 I'm a beginner. Excuse me. Come back. I'm a beginner. Don't tell anyone that you saw someone painting and they was rubbish. <laughs> so I'm just putting in this uh, indication of trees back in the distance there. And uh, this wet colour is mixing with the under colour. And uh, that's making a nice happy reaction. Which we want to make things a little bit lighter, a little bit more lighter. Could even uh, go to town and with that background, but I don't want to because it's in the background. So, what am I messing around at? So yeah, hey, it looks like a cloud there. Let's develop that. Let's get a bit more of this white. Um, tiny bit of yellow, and I just got a little bit of um, yellow and raw sienna in with the white <laughs> I'm actually uh, transferred to my microphone watching this because 
uh, when I was editing, <laughs> the uh, sound went crazy. Uh, I don't really know what happened actually. Maybe I nudged a cable on the microphone or something, but it was uh, not nice. <laughs> so I thought I'd better uh, finish this off using uh, my mic. And uh, so here we go. Uh, I was just putting in some cloud shapes because when you see that little uh, cloud, you think, wow, I'll go for it. When you see it, might as well go for it. And you see that when I used my finger, just used my finger and just went across the bottom of the cloud. And that's a easy way of softening it. <laughs> and I use my finger in a lot when I'm doing this painting to soften things. And I do that when I'm oil painting as well, to soften areas. Just remember, if you do that, like this, and soften in areas, don't put your finger in your mouth. Because <laughs> you, otherwise you'll have a paint finger in your mouth, and uh, it doesn't taste very nice. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just washing my brush. Wash your wash your wash. Yeah, I'm really enjoying using the watercolour and gouache at the moment. Um, it's just such a fun medium to use. It's so uh, quick for clear up. <laughs> when when I when I used to do um, oil painting classes, and uh, I would have like ten people set up with their easels and stuff, and then when they'd all leave, I would have to uh, tidy up and. You know, it's hard enough tidying up after one person. Imagine tidying up after ten. <laughs> but this would be easier uh, for tidying. I mean, it is. So what I'm doing here is uh, I got a bit of sap green and framing it in in areas to add a bit more colour into things, charge that colour up a bit. Because it's it, it it's a nice dark. I mean, the if you were taking a picture probably of this scene. Everything will probably go black-ish, the darks anyway, but when you're looking at it, it had more of a greeny hint to it in places. It's amazing how uh, your eyes pick up a lot, heck of a lot more than your camera. <laughs> more, A lot more colours. Um, I don't think a camera can do what your eyes can do what well, I know they can't you can't get that range of color so yeah um, as this is drying because I'm painting quite slow for this really um, sometimes when I'm out and about I gotta paint really fast because the light changes so quickly and uh, you've got to uh, got to capture it as fast as you can so you have to be quick so I'm just mixing myself a uh, light color for where the sun's striking the side of the tree and uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, I forgot about that I'm actually doing the ground now mixing like a yellowy color for the ground just to block in some colour. Yeah, it's unfortunate about my microphone dying on this episode. <laughs> because uh, I, I was on a, on a roll. Well, I felt like I was anyway. I'll try and explain it the best I can. Yeah, so now, hopefully, I've decided to, yeah, I think, I thought I'll just block that in, and then uh, when that dries, I've, I can start adding more colour to it. So now I'm thinking I need my light colour, and uh, the light, um, the sun was really strong, and it was, I was sweating, <laughs> I was sat on this field, and uh, it was so hot, 
and I was like, I need to get this painting finished, I need to get it finished, I need to get it finished. So I was mixing my colours really fast, and because uh, it was so hot, um, the paints were drying so fast on the palette, so I had to keep use this little spray, and I was uh, spritzing away, <laughs> keeping my paint movable, and uh, sweat was pouring off my brow. I, I, I mean just thinking about it I'm starting to sweat <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting a bit of green a bit of uh, I think I'm throwing in lemon yellow cad yellow <laughs> obviously the white gouache to make it opaque because if you just put um, straight yellow watercolor on there you're not going to get this brightness that you need You'd have to paint it differently. You'd have to leave the areas that you want to be light. Probably use a white paper instead of the tinted paper like I'm using. You can do that though. You can use masking fluid. I'll do an episode doing that as well. Because it depends what you're painting. It makes you work differently. Uh, whatever. And, and also sometimes I have black on black gouache on my palette and sometimes I don't um, I washed it all off the other day because it muddied my colors up but on another painting it worked really well <laughs> so you know you use whatever it is that you need for whatever situation it is You've got to be flexible so yeah I'm making putting a bit of sap green in a bit of yellow in mixing it up thinking highlight so the reason you put your yellow in with the white uh, to warm it up and you need quite a lot because the white tends to be cool it cools things down and when you've you got a hot highlight you need that yellow to keep it hot <laughs> I, I did a J there I was like oh it's a J I can't leave a J in the tree Although I could have left it and then I didn't need to sign it I could have just left it like that. <laughs> uh, I accidentally highlight areas that don't need highlighting. I realise later. <laughs> you start enjoying yourself and having fun, but you really need to remember which way the light's coming from. And considering I made the effort to sit in a tree and I sit in a tree. <laughs> I mean, sit out in a hot field and paint what I was what I was seeing. You know, use the sketch. You've got the sketch there. That's what it's there for. But you start having fun and enjoying yourself, and you're like, "Oh, highlights! Yeah, these are great. I'll start highlighting here and here and here. Oh, this is fun. This is making it look better after each highlight." But you have to uh, rein yourself in and go, "Wait a minute. There isn't a highlight there, and I put highlight in." <laughs> so you have to bring yourself back and I'm uh, what am I doing I, I, I realise soon I'm like oh no oh no <laughs> what have I done so I think oh right quick fix get some water on a brush and wash it off <laughs> because it reactivates so you can wet, wet, wet it like that, get a paper towel, dab it, lift it out, and then uh, you can get mix a little bit of dark again and just put it back on. And there's always a fix, there's always a way in there. You can fix most things. And then put that fixed colour, <laughs> it's a bit of bluey green here and there everywhere so it looks like it was there originally <laughs> you gotta work out ways to uh, make it look right like that's what I meant to do it meant to be like that honest yeah I'm starting to think oh well that highlight wasn't there either I'll put this, yeah, see, I just throw it in everywhere. 
and uh, you can soften your bases of the uh, highlights as well by using a bit of water and you could just mix it in if you need to so if you don't like, like them lines that were going down there I didn't like that so I thought soften it, it works perfectly and then back to highlighting where you can see on the sketch I was using the sketch look at the sketch, look at the painting, look at the sketch, look at the painting and, and then I always try and remember what it was like as well because sometimes you know you could be sketching away quickly the sun's blasting out your eyes are <laughs> your eyes are being strained by the light and the flies flying around and so sometimes your sketch can be completely wrong actually I do, I do struggle sometimes when uh, when I was painting at night and I did a nighttime sketch wow my eyes were just so confused <laughs> because uh, I had a light on my sketch pad which I'll have to do a video on to show you and then uh, and then I was out painting and and then I looked up at what I was painting, my eyes changed, and then I looked down at my paper to paint it, and my eyes were changing again. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. But it's, it's great fun. So what I've done here is I uh, took some of the paint off my brush, so my highlights will be a bit paler than uh, and a bit weaker than uh, the ones on the main tree, the star of the show tree. <laughs> See, using the finger just to soften the edge. Something I like about using this uh, brown paper as well, the, uh, the, uh, the brown... Um, <laughs> can't remember what it's called now see white I think see white the brand is and uh, some of it comes through and warms the areas up on the trees or in the sky you can actually use it to your advantage to create a bit of warmth I really like them I, I, I made sure I bought a couple ready <laughs> Just mixing myself some colour, a bit of green. I was like, oh, I forgot to show. Still not in shot. <laughs> but I'm uh, mixing myself some dark, I think, to go into the ground. I'm pretty sure it was just a bit of blue, a bit of brown, a bit of green, and a bit of white. That's all. And then I uh, keep changing it because I didn't want this ground to just all be one block color, one the same. You don't want it to be all the same. Sometimes a block of the same works. Sometimes it just doesn't. Depends what you want. Depends what effect you want, really. I love uh, the fact in painting. There's no rules. You just do what you want and uh, see what happens and learn as much as you can by copying people, by admiring <laughs> and remembering what you thought. Oh, that's good. I'll try that. <laughs> um, yeah, mixing some paint again. Oh, mixing a bit of a darker colour. A bit darker, a bit more brown in the green, in the white, a bit more sap green. Just makes it a little bit better. I threw a bit of yellow in that. 
extreme close-up of the palette. So I'm going to get some of this color in. Just a little bit different. I actually remember the grass being uh, quite bright because the sun was so bright I remember it being quite reflective and uh, it's strange actually because sometimes the grass when it I'm not sure if it's another bit of trickery from the eyes <laughs> but sometimes I was looking and I was like the, the grass almost looks white like the highlights on the grass were white like pure white and I was like if I painted it like that it would look cold strange isn't it so i put some dark under where those trees are because it was you know dark where those trees were because of the mass of the trees and plus by doing that it gives you another plane so you get that plane and then the horizon where the tree sort of is and then you've got the one behind so you've got a few planes there So now I'm getting a bit of red. I think that was a bit of uh not sure what red that is, Indian red or I'm not really sure. But just a bit of red, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm doing is I'm warming up some of the areas, some of the tree branches and uh, tree trunks just to give it a bit more heat in there then I, I use my finger just to wipe it to get so some of the paint stays on some of it comes off um, just enough is left and then when it dries it fades a little bit so it's just warming things up just washing my brush again washing my brush again check in uh, the sketch getting a bit of a uh, strong yellow there some white ah splatter technique <laughs> I forgot I did that um, what there was is there was loads of bugs everywhere and uh, the sunlight was hitting them and I looked and I, I was like I didn't even notice all that and uh, so I thought oh, I've got to see if I can put that in so just making a, a wet yellow and then just flicking the bristles and it splatters and then you get, an, you get splatters all over it which works uh, works well and uh, I've used that technique for other things um, probably uh, should do something on that as well there's a lot of videos I want to make um, on the, on this technique because these they're quite verse they're so versatile these this setup and you can do all sorts so there were some posts in front where uh, it keeps the horses in so I made a <laughs> An executive uh, decision when I was painting that the posts would not go where the trees are because I don't want I didn't want to cover up the uh, trees I wanted the uh, fence posts to be in the gaps <laughs> how convenient that way they get a better a clear read their uh, this silhouette is nicely shown the 
post is too big. <laughs> Maybe the farmer only had that post left and he, uh, he was a bit tired and he was knocking the posts in and he didn't knock that one in hard enough. <laughs> we can make excuses. Nobody's going to go there and see if it looks exactly like that so we can uh, do what we like. <laughs> So just mixing it up a little bit of sunlight colour, imagining the sunlight hitting the tops of that post and uh, I made it too light so you can't see it. <laughs> um, but I rectify that later. There we go. Give it a little bit more colour. So I still want to make this dark in this foreground anyway. Don't want to make it too light. I want this to be uh, quite dark. And then the it was actually like this really thin wire going across these posts but it was hard to paint so I just sort of uh, did an effect really. <laughs> and I find it easier to do lines and like this, so I'm pulling it towards me. So that's what I did. Just pull, pull it towards me using the flat of the brush. Go wee. And, uh, and leaving those little gaps helps to uh, <laughs> sell the effect. I don't know why it does. But it just makes it better. The solid line just makes it look a bit too stiff, strong. I'm not sure. Washing the brush. And drying the brush. And then having a look and thinking, oh, I didn't put these in. <laughs> the uh, these trees in the background that were just hanging around there, they were just floating. And I was like, oops, I need to do that. And then I also remembered the um, those background trees. The um, I'm not sure what they are, conifer family or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it was it had like a bluish look to them maybe they're like pine trees no I don't know but yeah they had a blue look <laughs> I can't remember what I said there I think I said look at the nice solid blue that the uh, gouache has created it's so nice to use. There we go. I inserted that blue into that mix because it did have a blueness. Yeah, but doesn't that look good though? The gouache it made a nice solid colour, and uh, everything's. I just really like it. I really like the medium, and it's good because you can use your gouache paintings. And take him into uh, the studio and do an oil painting of it. This is your time to experiment and enjoy yourself and then use that. Use that in the studio. So there we have it. There's the painting. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And hopefully I'll see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.